Hello everyone, and welcome to what I'd like to start calling Rank Up Run Through. What we're going to be doing here today, we're going to be going through like every buff in this this anniversary we just had, and I'm going. And the the good thing about this is I wait until like the end, so I don't have any like knee jerk reactions to these and and completely miss huge things like uh like something on that we'll see on uh, this first one here, this first servant. So like there there were a lot of mixed opinions about this this whole anniversary and I completely understand that like a, a lot of there was just a lot of nothing and I think that's the biggest problem it's not so much they did bad things and it's more so they just didn't do a lot of good things but that's not the point here this is what we're going to be going over we're going to be going over all of these new buffs which I think was like the most hyped thing for me this anniversary but that's usually how it is it's just I like I like seeing new balance changes I'm a I'm a big gameplay person but without further ado let's get right into it so the very first one was Artoria Altar so uh, we're not gonna be going through like their entire kits we're just gonna be covering the things that matter so so what they did they changed her base mana burst into this uh, this new one which it's three time, three turn, so like you can, you don't get punished for only having one Buster card in one turn. You could actually get three Buster cards worth out of it. They added Pierce Envolm for three turns, which I think is really cool. She had zero utility beyond battery before, and even then, battery it's kind of hard to call that utility. It's just sort of it's sort of in the same category as a heal to some extent. Uh, but then you've also, you've also got trigger skill on buster attacks, you get 10% charge per enemy you hit. So that, so whenever you hit someone with a buster card, you get 10% charge. So this applies in a very unique way on RNP, and you get 10% per enemy you hit. So if there are three enemies on the field, you get 40% refund because she'll, she already has this 10% on her NP. And you just get like so you can get 40%. And if you're if you're doing double vitch system, it's really easy to get her to three turn. Like with uh like my alt does it. She's she doesn't have her second append. You can black grail with double vitch and waver. It's specifically waver too. It's kind of funny because like most people don't use him these days. But the way his battery is segmented, like you need ten percent on turn two and three. Not sure if the effect on NP is intentional. I don't know, man. It's it's so good. Oh my god! It's Olga Marie Animosphere. Thank you for the follow. I think I can't believe El Presidente is here with us, and I got bonked immediately. Hello. So all around a really good buff. It means she can black rail farm if you're out, if you're up against a, a two 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 node or more. So, uh, if you're looking for farming stuff, that's great. Um, if you're not looking for farming stuff, this is still a really good buff. It means she can use her NP more often. I know some people get a little hung up on that, and they they focus too much on the far like how everyone's sis sensationalizing how they became a Buster farmer or whatever. But like, still in a challenge quest, you're gonna be like throwing out an NP, trying to attack a bunch of enemies at once. This means you do it more often, and like that's always been her selling point. Her she's Ow. She's never been like a card damage servant, and then she can also ignore invuln, so I think this is just a really good buff, even oh, outside of farming. You know what, I'm gonna give a rank, uh, a rating to all of these. So this buff, in my opinion, if it wasn't, if it wasn't per enemy, I'd have given it like like a an 8 out of 10. This is a 10 out of 10 buff for me, honestly. Uh, it gives me a reason to use her even though, like, like for a while I gave her a lot of shit because she's just really boring and in most ways it's just a downgrade of, of, um, of 
base Sartoria. Anyways, so next up we've got Jaguar Warrior, who I got a buff at the same time. Uh, perfect time for this jungle sounding music. So, it used to be 10 turn cooldown, which was easily one of the worst things about the skill, because you could usually only use it once per fight. Hello. But yeah, it was 30% buster, a two time evade, and then stars, so it was an it was an okay skill before that. It's just it had a horrible uh, cooldown. Like it, it that was that's like a five or six turn cooldown skill. But now they've added some other things to it. So still the three turn 30% buster, which is good for NP and card damage, even though her NP isn't really gonna be hitting that hard. Uh, but then we've also uh, so they reduced the cooldown to seven, which is great. That means you might actually cast it twice in a fight. Uh, same amount of ev evades, and then she also applies forest, which was something that was kind of holding her back a little bit before. And they doubled the amount of stars she gets, so she's even more likely to get enough stars to crit. And like. She's a Lancer, so she definitely could use the extra uh, 15. Except, uh, I don't know, actually, she she gets this Star Absorb now every time, so it's not as big of a thing. So, she gets Star Gen up and Star Absorb up, which me means she's going to be critting more often. She's also got the, uh, the crit damage buff, which she already had, but... Well, hey, I mean, more consistent crits, that means her DPS is going to be increasing a little bit. Uh, at least on the lower end, I'd say. Her NP is still not that great. It's, uh, it's like debuff resist down, and she doesn't have any debuffs in her kit. And it's only 10%, so it's, so even in team play, it's not going to be seeing much usefulness, but still, just, uh, all around a pretty good buff. I, I'd say it's a probably a 7 out of 10. She, her problems aren't quite entirely fixed, but one of them is. Uh, because, like, the biggest, her biggest problem is still her NP doesn't do much damage. If they gave her an NP buff, I think she'd be a really solid Lancer. Going on to the next one, we got Bradamante, another Lancer. So, uh, so, she's always been pretty mid, like, she was a Scotty looper in the height of Scotty, but that's, uh, that was basically all she had, and, like, she was also getting kind of outdone by lower rarity servants, but, uh, but I always thought she had a pretty good kit, because, like, she's got a, she's got stun, she's got crit rate down, she's got defense and guts, and she's got, uh, she's got a lot of things going on, in my opinion, that are pretty worthwhile. Uh, it's just her damage has always been really low. But they gave her a 30% battery on her battery skill. They increased it to 30%. It used to be 20%. It has the debuff removal that it already had before, uh, which I think is pretty cool, but it was kind of funny because it was just a generally worse version of Asclepius' third skill. But you also get 30% against Earth Attribute, which is pretty cool. Uh, attribute, Anti-Attribute niches have become extremely common. And then also NP Gain Buff, which helps her in Scotty Looping. I think that's a, a big focus of this skill. She's a lot more viable with Scotty. I'm not sure if she's able to triple Scotty. Uh, she might be able to triple Scotty. I'm not sure if she's able to Black Grail with, like... Oberon. She can? Well, plus she said she can, so, uh, uh, so yeah, it's a pretty boost, a pretty big boost for her as a farmer, I would say, uh, and she gets, like, a little bit more damage. NP buff probably would have been a, a, a little more appreciated, and that's gonna be a running theme here. Not on Zerks. Yeah. So I, personally, I'll give this, um, I'll give it a 7 out of 10. I believe I gave the last one an 8 out of 10. Uh, it, it 
doesn't quite fix her problem, she just needs more damage in general, and I think if they gave her something like a crit, crit buff on her NP, I think that would definitely help her out a lot. Uh, but she's, she's okay right now, I'd say. Uh, still low damage outside of Earth, and like, Earth isn't gonna be 100% of the time, so. Still, more NP spam, that's good for her. And, uh, like, considering how she's competing with Parvati, who just spams like it's nothing. Yeah. Also, good morning, plushie. So up next is William Tell, someone who has, um... I feel like the rap he gets for his buff isn't... It, it, I, I understand why people have issues with his buff. Uh, it's because generally people see him as a worse Robin. But, uh, and I, I get that, but, like, this, I think this is still a pretty good buff. It's not the only buff he needs, I, th I think he still needs one more buff. But this is a pretty good step in the right direction. So before, it was, uh, it was actually a pretty decent skill. 30% arts for three turns, three turn debuff immune. Like, that's some, that's some pretty good stuff. You don't see debuff immune with low stars very often. Like, the only other one that I can think of off the top of my head with debuff immune is Salome, and she has one time three turn. So, infinite three turn that's, is really nice when it comes up. So they made it, uh, they added this effect onto here, and now, now his NP only, so, okay, well, I guess we gotta go over how his NP works, uh, if you guys really, like, just to understand what was wrong with him and what this, uh, this this buff does. So basically he does bonus damage to evading enemies. Uh, when he does bonus damage to evading enemies, he out damages Robin by a decent bit. Uh, but when he's not, he, he, he does like 15k lefts, if I recall correctly. So, uh, they changed it now, so when you use his second skill, you both uh, like, if there's an enemy with an evade up, you give them a mark, which allows you to get the bonus damage uh, of an evading enemy, and it's there for three turns. And if they don't have the mark active, then they get this, this trigger that will apply the mark as soon as they use an evade. Which I think, I think it's a really cool idea for a buff. Like, it... Uh, it allows for more flexibility, which means, basically, if they evade, they he gets the evade effect for three turns instead. Uh, it's not quite the entire, the only thing he needed. Like, the, generally the thing that he needed more is, like, he needed a, a ceiling boost more so than a, than a consistency boost. But, uh, yeah, it, it's a pretty decent buff. It's a step in the right direction. It's It, it doesn't quite get him where he needs to be. Uh, but he's still in a good spot. A, a lot better of a spot now, in my opinion. Uh, he, he still is locked in his niche for the most part. But when his niche comes up, he's a lot more flexible. And, like, he can loop pretty easily. His, his NP gain is really good. It's better than Robin's. I would say, because he's got, like, he's already got 2% arts cards, basically. I think it's 1.98%, and then he's got a 30% buff, and then he's also got a skill that gives him absorb, and then he's got a skill that gives him a bunch of stars, so he can loop fairly easily. So I would give this buff, like, a 5 out of 10. It doesn't fix him entirely, it but it makes him less awkward. He crits harder than Robin too. Yeah, that's another thing that people underrate, I would say. Like, he does crit pretty good, uh, and that does give him that edge over Robin. Yeah, his, his crits have always been a bigger focus than his NP, that's true. But this helps his NP a little bit. So, 5 out of 10 for me. Then Raiko. Raiko, uh, it's kind of funny. Um, so, so they buffed her second skill. It used to be 30% buster for one turn and one evade for one turn on a six turn cooldown, which you'd expect like a 50%. Like, 
Jack has the same skill, but better. Like, it's a quick buff for one turn, but it's 50% with the evade. And uh, I'd say, arguably, Jack got more out of her buff before, because, like, he got... Like, the 50% quick actually does something for your gains. 30% buster doesn't do a lot for your damage, and that's the only thing it affects. Hey, Fred. But they made it a lot more flexible. Now it's it's still a one-turn evade, but now she has 30% buster for three turns. Which means you don't get penalized for that that turn of survival you need being on a turn you have buster cards, or you don't have buster cards, or whatever. And then you also get 30% battery, which is pretty nice. I've never really had issues with getting her NP, since she makes a bunch of stars and she has a really good absorb then, yeah, like, she crits pretty often, and her arts cards are already pretty above average, I would say. But yeah, uh, this means she's able to to double bitch over on with 50% CE. Specifically that way, though, because, like, if you... Uh, I mean, I guess you can use a super scope, but you can't do Atlas or... Uh, yeah, anyways, you're not very flexible on it. You have to have Oberon. You can't use a 50% charger or anything. And, like, uh, I don't think it would have been crazy if they gave her a 50% battery, but it's fine. 30% is still good. Uh, it's kind of funny because, from what I've seen, some people are still giving it a kind of a bad rap. Maybe just because it's kind of a boring buff, but like, it, it like it's the thing that people were asking for, for for fucking years. Like, people have been asking for like at least a thirty percent battery on her, and they gave her the thing she that I don't know. It's a recurring theme. We'll see. Uh, we'll see it at least one more time. Uh, I actually considered making a. Tr I almost made a video because of the other time it happened. So, moving on, we've got Hans, who definitely... Oh, I forgot to rank this one. So this one, this buff, I would give like a 9 out of 10. Uh, they could have done a bit more with it, and I think that would have been fine, because like, a lot of these, they give more than two effects, too. Uh, but with her, she only got two effects. And that's fine. It's fine by me, honestly. That's something we see a lot in this buff campaign. There's a, there's a lot that have like three or more effects. So we have Hans's first skill, which used to just be a 40% crit buff for three turns. Now it's 50% crit buff for three turns. And depending on your alignment, you get a bunch of other stuff. So you get 50% star gen if you're good, which is, is nothing for him, but he's, uh, he's not good alignment, so whatever. Um, but for other servants, certain servants get a lot out of it, 50%. It's a, it's a lot more than the 80% chance of the 20% star gen on its NP. Uh, then, throw, shout out to one of the worst NP buffs in the game. Then, if you're balanced, you get NP gain, which is great because he is balanced and he gets NP gain. Just all around great stuff. And then... If you're evil, you get NP damage. Alright. And then if you are not any of those, so if, I think if you're Summer, Bride, or Insane, you get more crit. So 20% more crit, and you get 80%, not 80%, 70%. So this wasn't a necessary buff. Like, it, it gives them a lot of different things. I wouldn't say it's outright niche things. Uh, it's just a good buff. Um... Uh, not when he needed. Shakespeare definitely needed it more. If we were going to rate it on, rate it based off of who deserved it more, like if they needed it more, like I don't think this is a super high impact buff because he was already like uh, a top tier low star. But now he's even better, so I'd give it like a nine out of ten. Uh, it, hmm, I don't know. I kind of want to just give it a ten out of ten. 
but like I feel like the biggest reason why that would be the case is just because it, like I, I don't know I don't feel like it's that huge for him I'll just give it a 9 out of 10 because like it doesn't have a huge impact on him as a whole I would say Uh, it's just like some more 20 percents going on there so 9 out of 10 is still a pretty good one the buff isn't 10 out of 10 he is yeah basically yeah haunts was already really good so karn has always had some he hasn't always had some weird reputation but like he's always had like this one problem like he's had several problems but uh, one of them more. Uh, people bitched about more than others. But uh, one of the problems was his first skill is, a, in my opinion, a pretty good skill. Like, it's a debuff success. To, uh, like, it, it, it's 500% chance of 50% debuff resist down, which I think on another servant would be really good. Like, someone like Binke, for example, could definitely use that, but... Uh, no, he gets, like, skill seal for one turn against one enemy, and that's a whole skill on the same cooldown. It's actually a five-turn cooldown, it's still just garbage. For 60% chance at AoE and P-Seal. Amazing. Just what he want. Just what his type of servant wants. But yeah, basically, this is just kind of mismatched on him. It's good for team play, it's just kind of kind of weird like he could have used something else like self survival like uh if you put a two time invul on this skill instead of this then that'd be great it'd be kind of awkward though if you if you put that on top of this effect because you'd use that on an np turn and well this wouldn't be an np turn anymore then there's also this skill this is another one of his problems it's a good skill for one turn but then it's nothing for four turns, and that's what a lot of people dislike. Because, uh, like, even... I don't think it's that big of a problem, because, like, he has an NP upgrade, and the NP upgrade applies Buster Resist down. His NP seal would be 130%, or... Uh, his NP seal... So, this is a 100% chance of applying, but as long as they don't have debuff immune, the... The buff success, not buff success, debuff resist debuff is going to land. Is it, uh, unless they have 500% uh, debuff resist, which I don't think they've done before. Uh, then this is going to land, so if they don't have, like even if it's up against, if you're up against Ketz, this is going to land. Because Ketz has like 50% debuff resist passive. He's still... You still get to land that because it's going to reduce it by 50% then that. So it's 150% chance of NP seal. So there's a couple servants he can synergize with. Uh, you just have to be creative with it. It's just kind of awkward with him. But neither of those got buffed. This is what got buffed. So it used to be 50% star gen for three turns. And then crit damage for three turns. And then 25% battery. Like, uh, the other effects are okay. It was always the 25% that kind of messed with people. Because, basically, even back then, before Korean and Oberon changed what you wanted battery-wise, most batteries were either 20%, 50%, or... Yeah, it was either 20% or 50%. There weren't very many 30%, definitely not very many 25%. And then you, then you're running either a zero percent craft essence or a fifty percent craft essence. So it always made it awkward. You needed five percent more charge than you wanted to. And people complained about it for years, and now they've fixed it. It's thirty percent instead. Some people are disappointed that it wasn't more than thirty percent, but like, I mean, whatever. Like, we got other effects on it. They changed. They not only changed this one, they boosted the other two effects and added another one on top of it. So you get 100% star gen now. Which is, like, like, dude, 
that's actually pretty nuts. Uh, people look at his... Uh, we'll, we'll get back to that. Uh, then they boost the crit damage from 40% to 50%. So, 10% boost It's basically what they did with Hans. It's, I'd say it's a little more impactful on him because he's a 5-star with 5-star stats. And he's got the the 5% increase in his attack because he's a he's a lancer boy and then they also add this this goddamn 40 stars which is so rare you'd expect 30 stars like what like what taiga has but he got 40 so he crits a lot more consistently and i think okay so something I have not seen other people mention about his first uh, about that first effect the star drop, drop boost so like he has one hit buster so it's not much for that three hit arts which is okay three hit quick which means you get nine stars tops and then an extra attack which is four hits which is it's okay hit counts it doesn't mean you're gonna be seeing a lot of stars out of that here's the thing though the sergeant it applies more to more than just these cards it also applies to his NP and I've tested this I tested this like as soon as he got this buff because I I, I realized this was gonna be something for him five hit NP AoE Buster he hits 15 times with 100% sergeant up I tested this against some against three casters. He made over 20 stars. So they added a 20 star bomb to his NP whenever he has his third skill active. That is that's a lot. If he gets a brave chain, he he easily gets over 40. So like this is like I feel like the Stargen is one of the biggest changes on this because it because it means he's going to be getting stars like on the next couple turns because you use this in this battery you get his NP and you got the stars so you're basically guaranteed a crit chain next turn you've got over 40 stars again because your NP just made at least 20 and then your brave chain yeah very very impactful I don't think people realize how impactful it is but I, I don't know I haven't seen a lot of the like I saw a lot of negativity like at the uh, initial drop of this skill buff uh to an extent where i wanted to make a video on it i even recorded it out and i was like it, i started to edit it but then i realized i couldn't get it out and before the next line of buffs came out so i was just like ah, now nah, i'll just i'll just put it in this new video i'm gonna make at the end of the the campaign anyways great buff I really like it. Uh, I'd say 10 out of 10. It fixes uh, the main problem people complained about on his third skill, even if uh, these days that's not enough for some people. But it also boosted all the other effects. And next up, we've got Okita, uh, who, like, I mean, there's some real stinkers in the Assassin class. I, I don't think she was one of them. Like, uh, I'd say Kuritsugu needed it more. Uh, Steno needed it more. Uh, I think Steno is better than people act, but she still could have used something like a team crit buff. Uh, maybe Donzo. There's some other ones that could have used it more, but she still got a pretty, pretty decent one. So it, it's kind of nuts though, because like, okay, she got the 30% battery, which is good. Uh, they didn't get rid of the demerit on her third skill unfortunately so she still gets up to 50 percent defense down uh so you still can't remove it unless you're in a very specific situation where the enemy removes one buff on attack so shout out to the oberon fight i guess uh if you're if you feel like using her there but yeah 30 percent np gain 30 percent np charge uh it means that she is i think she can barely scrape by with triple scotty this was already kind of a nut skill because it's a three turn mana burst. And she already has some of the best quick cards in the game. 
And this just really pushes them over to fit, like, the best quick cards in the game. And then they got the NP gain buff on it. And she's got, like, almost 10% on her quick cards now. Uh, let me remind myself right quick. I did the, ma the math a few days ago. 0.92 times 5 times 1.5 times 1... Oh, yeah, that's 6.9. Nice. Times 1.3... It's 9% quick cards. Uh, for those who don't know, that's basically a 3% a, a arts card. So, you know, King Hassan has that beastly arts card. Her quick cards are basically the same thing. <laughs> so, her NP spam just went through the roof with that. Um, I... I don't think this was that necessary of a buff, but it does help her with Scotty looping. Uh, I would give it an 8. Because, like, the thing that it helped her with, she was already good at NP spam. Uh, like, her... Honestly, I, I feel like they should have done a one-time debuff immune on this skill as well. I think that would have been really fitting because of her NP demerit. This is a one-turn stun. 60% uh, chance, but still. It's still good, though. I still think it's a really good skill. Uh, so, I'd say 8 out of 10. Uh, no, 9 out of 10. I I'd say this is on par with Hans's buff. Uh, Hans's buff is just a bit bad. Like, he's already a better servant, I'd say. And then... Oh, boy. This one. So much to say about this. Um... So, you're going to hear a differing opinion from me, because, like, most people seem to have bad opinions of this, and I've seen, like, even, uh, even, like, a day or so later, I've seen this takes I do not like. Uh, so, this used to be 7 turn cooldown, 50% battery, and 60% chance of stunning, which, I know people don't like the 60%, but, I mean, she has... She has this here, which is 100% debuff resist down. So, it basically guaranteed it if you land landed that. Although, like, if they have enough debuff resist, you can miss that too. But they buffed it. They added three effects to it. They changed three things about it. So, they reduced the cooldown, which is great, because most 50% most batteries have a, a six-turn cooldown. Uh, like, Katoki, for example, only has a 50% battery, and it's 6 turn cooldown. But she also got the stun change to be AoE. So everyone has a chance of being stunned. And then, Arts Resist down for 3 turns. So, I, I know a lot of people say that the NP upgrade would have been a lot more fitting on her, and I, I kind of do agree. But that does not mean this is a kind of a kick-ass buff, okay? Uh, because, like, the thing that I keep seeing people say is, like, like there are ways that it'll miss or whatever. And I, I do get that. But, um, but like, even though it's 60% chance on this, this stun, like... I mean, she does still have this, and you might use this on the same turn. Because it's 50% battery and then the 50% mana burst, and yeah. So, one of them is very likely to get stunned. The, then the in, then she also has this passive, which I haven't seen anyone else mention, which gives her 10% buff success, or debuff success. Yeah, I know her first skill is an AoE. I, I mentioned that. Um, but regardless, like the, people act like the Arts Resist is also 60% chance of applying. It's still 100%. It's 110%. So, l low levels of Magic Resist are... It, like, then she'll have like a 5% like a chance of missing it. So, yeah... Yeah, 92% total arts up. Like, this is AoE. Um, it, another thing people miss about this is that this is basically 
a three turn NP gain buff for the entire team because everyone benefits from the arts um, buff or debuff. So 30% more NP gain for everyone. I'm surprised they didn't do 20%, but it went up to 30% instead. But she also has some interesting synergies. I think she has some really good synergy with Kazgil now. Uh, like, she already had some decent synergy, because she's also... She's AoE Arts. But now that Skill Seal... Skill Seal? Why am I saying Skill Seal? That's a, something I'm going to say in a minute. Uh, he has 30% debuff success chance. She has 10% debuff success chance. That... 10% plus 30% is 40%, and then 40% plus 60% is 100% chance. So if they have no, if they have no debuff resist, you're going to stun everyone. Yeah, like I mean, they changed three things on this uh, this skill. It is very impactful, I would say. Uh, another thing. <laughs> I saw someone mention that, like, the enemy can, like, remove, uh, they can remove the debuffs or something. Like, I mean, let's, let's not forget the fact that they're probably not going to remove anything if they're stunned. And they're also probably not going to remove anything if they're skill sealed. Skill seal is going to prevent them from using skills. So there could be a break bar gimmick, but still. Oh, yeah, another thing. Another thing. You know how many assassins there are that have magic resist? And you're gonna, like, you're not gonna use her against non-assassins. There are five assassins with magic resist. Okay, it, it's not that common. Uh, so out of, like, the 30 plus? I don't know how many there are these days. It, it, you've got such a small amount that actually have magic crisis. Yeah, also, like, if you're using a secondary DPS, like, she gives them 20% attack and 30% arts. It, it's basically the same thing that Caskill was already offering. So, <laughs> yeah. And then, like, you got... She's she's just a lot better in a team than she used to be. So I think she's got some good things going on these days. Anyways, I think I've said everything about her that I want to say. Um, it's annoying. Some people have really bad takes these days. And shit, viewer might think I have really bad takes, but whatever. What can be said? Hey, editing auto here. Uh, I realized that I done goofed and I did not give a score for it. So basically, her biggest problem is her NP damage in general. And since the arts resist down isn't always going to be there, she still will have damage issues. But this is a tremendous boost in a lot of her capabilities. So I'd give this buff about an 8 out of 10. Doesn't fix her, but it's a pretty big step in her favor. There's actually a reason to use her over Murasaki, for example. Now, Kiyohime, I feel like this is just, like, one of the worst buffs that we got. Uh, because, like, she used to have 30% crit rate down for three turns, which is an okay skill. It's uh, it's very lackluster, only one effect. Like, you, you expect more than that on one skill. So the thing they changed is now it uh, it applies a burn on all enemies for 1,000. Five turns, so good, a little bit of uptime. Then also 20% battery. They might as well have gone for a 30%, but whatever. And then this effect, which I do think is pretty neat. 50% burn boost for five turns per attack so for three turns yeah it, it's interesting that it works that way because usually usually it's apply burn and then they also do the dot boost on some other skill so like with koyan dark for example uh she applies the burn deep the burn boost on the skill and then she also applies burn from a, attacking 
So I think this is kind of interesting. It, it It's annoying that it's so reliant on cards, but like, it, it, it's a little something. And I guess they did, I guess that is like three effects, so. So continuing that trend. But she still needs another buff for sure. I think she needed something that like helps her damage a bit more. And she does have this NP gain buff now, and her NP gain stats were, were all right, okay. They were okay before. Uh, actually, her quick card was kind of, her quick cards were kind of booty. Not gonna lie. I mean, two percent is okay. It's, she's got one point oh five percent, and then the arts card was okay. But for third skill, so what I was thinking. What I was thinking for a skill buff for her, uh, an idea I really liked was like maybe on this or something, maybe on this skill or on her NP, uh, basically offensive buff removal, and for every offensive buff removed, she gets like a certain amount of battery, like like she could get 20% per offensive buff removed uh, on one enemy. Which would have been really cool, because that means she works around this, it's automatically 20% for herself. Or you could put offensive buff removal on the NP, and yeah, <laughs> uh, that works too. I don't think she's too far from being decent, uh, but like she's competing with Ibaraki Lancer, and she's competing with Raikou Lancer. And both of them are just in so much better of a spot than her, because I think they outdamage her in general, because they also have crit capacity and she does not. So she's still quite mid. Uh, her buff, I would give like a 4 out of 10, 3 or 4, because like I do like dot boost means, it's just that, that doesn't apply in the same way. I haven't messed around with it much, and I do have her on my ult, so I might mess around with it sometime in the near future, but, uh, yeah, it doesn't really, I feel like it doesn't really help her at all. Okay, on to the next one. Uh, toss. <laughs> I should have switched that over before, uh, before I got to this. I could just censor that. So, here's another one people have... And I think, I don't think this is as controversial as Anastasia's, because I think a lot more people just dislike this one in general, because I don't think this is as impactful as Anastasia's, but... So, her second skill, 7 turn cooldown, and you get Terror for 3 turns, so you're probably going to get a stun. Uh, I think it's like... I think you got like an 80% chance of stunning in one of the three turns, and then 20% defense down. So it's an okay skill, it's just the cooldown is higher than I'd like. But they fixed the cooldown, now it's at six turns, which I think is a lot more reasonable. And they also gave her 30% buster for three turns. So, personally I would have preferred if it was buster for the team. Like, if they dropped it to 20% AoE, I, th I think that would be a lot better. Because she already does have team supporting capacity, but... Like, this kind of just helps her... In a vacuum, like, if she's just trying to do damage herself. And I think it's cool that they gave her that flexibility, because her NP damage was just not that great. Uh, so another, another inconsistency in the community... Uh, a lot of people don't think this is very helpful, but this is literally changing the one thing that people kept going on about. Like, 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 uh, one of the things that I use to, to just, and it might not be, it might not be the best idea, because, like, I do go in a lot of different Discord servers, and I do interact in with people in different Discord servers, but, like, one of the best ways that I have, like, gotten a feel for community opinions is during Mist's tier list streams, and uh, it's not what Mist says, because I think Mist has better takes than most.
people and definitely most of his chat it's his chat because even though like his own community is more skewed in a certain direction there's a lot of people that go to his chat that aren't there normally and they're just maybe vocal minorities but a lot of them so when we got to her i was i was like almost yelling at the screen because like people were just like so dumb <laughs> <laughs> they they just kept saying things that I, I I was just annoyed by. So people always complained about her damage, her bad damage because it's single target debuffs, and like buffs are better. So they gave her a buff that increases her NP damage, and people are still bitching. Like, what? <laughs> what can we do here? It's even 30%. Usually they do like 20%. This is a good buff for her. It helps her out in her own DPSing. It doesn't help her out in her own debuffing capacity, but I think she was already a good debuffer. And then, like, it also, since they reduced the cooldown, it helps her if you're trying to three-turn with Vich. It's just like, people... People go a long time asking for one thing, and as soon as they get it, they just want more. Because, uh, like, they did that with... They did that with Karna, too. Uh, Karna... Karna ha always wanted the 30% battery. People always wanted a 30% battery. They gave them that, they boost the other two effects, and they add another effect that's really strong, and people still complain. Uh... Yeah, anyways, bad takes, you know, what can you do? So I think this buff, I'd give it an 8 out of 10. I would have preferred something more supporty, but this helps her just DPS better. I, I like it. And on to the next one, Mandricardo. And this one, uh... I think it's kind of interesting. I think it got kind of a bad rap as soon as it came out because, like, you do... Okay. So, I'm getting ahead of myself. So, basically, he didn't have a second skill most of the time. Uh, if you get him below 50% HP, you can use a second skill. It's one time, one turn attack buff. One time, one turn crit buff. He removes defensive buffs from the enemy, and then he also uh, KMSs himself in Minecraft, uh, except it's in FGO, and it's instantly doing that, so be it NP or on hopefully one crit card. So he couldn't do a Brave Chain on this skill, which was kind of a shame. They changed this. Uh, what I was hoping for was something like maybe you put a SAR bomb on it and a battery just so, like, when you're down below 50% HP and you want to get rid of them, you can get that crit more likely. Uh, but, oh jeez, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, they changed it so now he has one turn of attack, which, uh, that's interesting. Like, I thought he died after one hit. And then also one turn of crit. And they changed this. So now he dies at the end of the turn. So like he can get a whole a full chain out of it, which is good for damage. So I think some people focus on the fact like you might just not get cards, which means you might not get much out of this. But there's another thing you can do. You can actually like try to use this outside of ah! memes i'm gonna have to censor that word because i want to get i want to get like a, a a crumb of money out of this yeah i, I can't wait to get this five dollars so you can give him guts so like you can get you can use someone like Bodica. Or, probably not Asclepius, because Asclepius is going to keep him above the 50% range most of the time. But you can also use Paracelsus, and you can just use this as a burst turn thing. Uh, I'd say a, 
I'd say Boudica is probably better for it, because since she has the defense buffs from her NP, she can get him down to a safer range. And then, yeah, like, you pop that, it's 50% boost, uh, you get good crit turn, it's just a lot of stuff. And that's pretty decent, I'd say. Uh, a lot of people would prefer the NP upgrade, but yeah, it's a recurring theme. No NP upgrades. We have yet to see an NP upgrade here. Yeah, if they had gotten rid of the HP requir requirement, I think that would have been a lot better. But that being said, he does have his taunt. That does help him get down to lower HP ranges easier. It is what it is. I think they want to be careful. I think they're just trying to be careful about giving art servants NP upgrades because they know that that art servants get a lot more out of an NP upgrade than any other class. Because they like he doesn't have issues spamming like at all. Uh, he's got good NP gain. Like you get another twenty percent arts there on him on his NP. It's just good stuff. Yeah, if you're looking for a Rider version of Arash, you might as well just use Habitrot. They have similar damage anyways. Even if you give him a Guts, can he survive the next turn? Well, I mean, if you play around it. Like, if you've got... Um... Let's see... Like, you can use a Taunt alongside him. You can use a George. Uh, and then have him go with that Guts. And then, like, you can also give him a Gutsy if you want to. Uh, although that might be a little annoying because you got to get this MP again. Uh, which means that you don't have to bring someone else that has that guts. Yeah, it doesn't stack, so it's only one time he's going to be applying that. I guess they... Uh, nah. Never mind. No reason to mention that. That's so unimportant. Anything. So, I think this buff is like a 5 out of 10. Most of the time, it doesn't do anything. Uh, when it does do something, it's pretty cool. Uh, it's just... I don't know. Uh, I, I, it feels kind of like William Tell's buff, where it's more of a flexibility buff than it is like making him better at something. It's just less awkward. Uh, and they did that several times, uh, where it just... Like, they're taking a skill that was kind of mid, they're making it less awkward. So, 5 out of 10 for me, I'd say. Up next, oh boy. So, uh, even more Saberface wank going on here. So, they took her first skill, which used to be 30% uh, arts and 20% uh, defense. And they applied a 30% battery to it, because if she needed help with anything, it was getting her NP more often. Oh, that's it's weird that this was already translated, but that wasn't. Okay. Anyways. They also gave her Sure Hit, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, like, she already had insane NP refund, because she has a 10 hit NP. It's literally a 6... A 6% NP in its single target, and then on top of that, she's got 20% refund for no goddamn reason. But I guess her first skill does help her a bit with her first, uh, his, her second skill. Which, uh, so I guess they kind of did a shiki thing where they gave her a battery so that the drain works better. Uh, it, and also, ironically, this is the exact same skill as Saber Shiki's. <laughs> Uh, it's just got a different name. Instead of be so, instead of yeah, whatever. It's beach house protection. It's such a silly sounding thing. Uh, in contrast, isn't she one of the servants that can refund 100% charge? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, she she's always had really insane refund, and then like they they haven't. They didn't offset it with their cards. Like, 
1.77% arts cards, and then she's also got a 30% arts buff. Like, she, I mean, she's never just needed help. Like, like, yeah. She's always been really good. Uh, she's always been really good at NP spam. Her NP damage is kind of mid, but still. Uh, never had issues spamming her NP. So let's... Let's look at the next servant. Uh, she didn't get a buff. Why... Why did this go to this servant? <laughs> like, this exact buff... Should have gone... To Artemis. Like, they could have put... Sure hit... And... A 30% battery on this servant. And it would have been way better. Way bigger of a glow up. For sure. Yeah, because, like, you could give that to her second skill and make this skill three turns. And that'd be, honestly, just a good fix for Orion. Like, exactly what they need. Uh, but they gave it to the servant that has no issues spamming her NP. Ah, oh, dude. Yeah, the, the buff went to the wrong servant, for sure. So, I give this buff, uh, it's sort of a Hans thing going on, where, like, she was already really good. Uh, the buff would have been better on someone else. I don't think NP gain was ever really a big issue she had. So, I'd give it, like, a 7 out of 10. The sure hit's really nice, it's just the other effect is, like, not really that huge. And then the very last one of the bunch, uh, also the first NP upgrade of this batch, which is rare. And, and I think it's just because NP upgrades are almost always really impactful. Because, like, you get the damage increase regardless of what other effects you get. It's a Y out of 10, indeed. So, before it was Skill Seal and Burn, which are two effects that are generally just not that useful. But now, they, oh man, they, they gave him crit for Buster of 50%, uh, if it's Sunlit Field and, like, he forces Sunlit, so who cares. And then also, Star Weight for Buster. So they gave him the two, uh, basically the two things he was missing. Uh, for just really good... Cr they basically gave him self-modification uh, on his NP. So... <laughs> uh, he still doesn't have much of a way of getting stars. Like, the only stars he has in his kit are, is this 10-star bomb. But that's even less of a problem now, because, like... Like... You... You have the Absorb for this. So that plus, like, whatever 10 or so you make from the previous turn. Also, there's so many ways of making stars these days, like, who even cares? Like, he is so solid now. Um, yeah. But, uh, oh, dude. It's also kind of funny, because now that they've upgraded this, his... It's kind of funny how people were complaining about his NP damage for a long time. But now, his NP damage is, like, some of the highest of all four-star sabers. <laughs> How much stars can he uh, can he generate with Buster or Quick Extra? Um, his Quick is only hit- only two hits, but he's one of those really rare servants who looks like they have a- a, a day one hit count thing going on, but he's actually got a really good extra attack. Uh, like, no, I, I'm not even joking, like, his extra attack, it's, uh, it's, what, 5.7%? And usually you see, like, 3%. So, yeah, it's sort of a caster Liz th go thing going on there, where, like, all the other uh, hit counts are shit, but because the extra attack is so high a hit count, comparatively, it just ends up being a lot. So, I'd say he probably makes, like, 15 plus uh, fairly easily if you're using that chain, but usually you're going to... If you can do any chain, you're probably going to be trying to do buster chains. 
Especially now that he has Absorb on Buster. So you're probably better off just spamming Buster Chains. So yeah, he's a... Uh, he got a pretty big glow up. I, this is a 10 out of 10 buff, honestly. I, I feel like this is one of the biggest buffs out of this entire campaign. Uh, because, like, it, it does the things he wants. Like, the only things he was missing, like, uh, one was a way of getting stars to go to him consistently, and then also, like, it, like multiplicatively, the only thing he was missing was a crit buff. The turn he NPs, the, the star absorb doesn't really apply. Yeah, that's a funny thing about this. He has a two-turn absorb on his NP. Because the, the first turn... Like... When you use the NP, the Absorb is not going to do anything. Uh, it's the same thing with Mothman. So the next two turns it does stuff, but... But yeah, like, we, our, our Buster supports these days give you a lot of battery, so it's pretty easy to get him to NP, like, once every three turns, probably. Kinda depends, though. Like, if you're using Vich, like, he scales really well with Fitch, by the way. Uh, people hyper-focus on her NP reloading thing going on, but, like, she increases the uptime on his first two skills. Like, she's got really good synergy with them. Because, like, with one of them, you got six turns of his first two skills straight. With two of them, you have two turns of overlap on these, where he can double up on his skills, and he's got, that means he's got 80% Attack, and then, what, uh, 160% Buster for three turns? Yeah, he's, he's really good now. This and Karna buff to you are the best buffs, because with Karna, it's not just solving the problem, but also makes him better at what he was decent at. Yeah. Yep. Uh, they fixed the pro- So, yeah, that's a, that's something we see a lot. We saw a lot with this campaign. Uh, three effects. Uh, in recent years, like, what they've been doing, they've been doing, like, one or two effects. But with this one, we saw, like, the majority of them have three or four effects. Like, uh, Saber Alter, she got the... They changed the buster. They gave her buster... Yeah, like, and then NP... Uh, and then she has the Ignore Invuln, so that's three changes there. Uh, then on Taiga, like, cooldown reduction, they increased the star count, also gave her um, Forest Field, and, which was a rare effect, so, like, it kind of added two other effects to her, too. So she technically has five changes on her first skill. Then... Uh, Brad, she gets NP gain, up, uh, Earth, and then they increase the battery, so that's three effects. Uh, with Tell, his is two effects. Uh, it's more of a flexibility thing, as said prior. Oh wait, no, it's three effects. Yeah, yeah, because cooldown reduction, then also it marks evading enemies, and it also uh, gives a preemptive mark whenever the enemy evades later on. Uh, Raiko only got two changes, uh, which uh, I, I guess that's part of why it feels lackluster compared to the others, because it's only the battery, and then the buster got changed to three turns. Hans got <laughs> Hans got four, actually five changes, because they increased the, the base crit, and then they gave him four different effects depending on alignment. And then, uh, Karna got four, because he got the, the battery boost, the star gen boost, the crit damage boost, and then the stars. Uh, Okido, she only ended up getting two effects, so she got the NP gain buff and the NP battery. Anastasia got three effects. Kyuhime got three effects. Abby got only two effects. 
And Mandricardo got, uh, I guess you can count it as three changes. It would have been funny if they reduced the cooldown on a second skill. <laughs> like, uh, at the end, that's, I'm gonna get it sooner next time, assuming I live. And then, Artoria got two effects. I feel like a, a lot of servants have ridiculously high cooldowns for no reason. Yeah, I think that's a big part of it, and I'm glad that they're taking steps to fix that, because a lot of servants just have cooldown issues. Uh, like, they might have decent skills, but they just have terrible cooldowns. And, like, yeah. They're doing, uh, doing stuff to... Uh, help mitigate that. And then he got three effects, because he got the two buffs, uh, like, on the star weight and on the the crit and then also the just the general mp damage so yeah i feel like it was a pretty good round of buffs i feel like there were some pretty impactful ones just because they added so many effects and modified so many effects but yeah uh I think that's going to be all for this video, so thank you all so much for watching. If you feel like, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to see more of, more videos remotely like this. Feel free to join as well to support the channel, because like I'm going to be moving sometime in the next month or so, and definitely need any support you guys are willing to donate. So anything is definitely appreciated. And like, leave a comment. Uh... I stream on Twitch, that's what I'm doing right now, that's why you see these comments on the screen. And, uh, I'll see you all on the flip side.